Good morning all. Summer's finally here, so I need to do some uh, solar stuff. Well, I want to do some solar stuff. And the first thing I need to do is replace these two connectors. Uh, these are MC4 solar connectors to banana plug terminals. And you can see that although the black one fared reasonably well last year, the yellow one absolutely hasn't. It's all got hot and melted. And the reason it got hot is because the connection inside here is all rusty because the water's got in. So this year I'm going to uh, make another set because I've got lots of these MC4 connectors. I swapped them for some charge controllers uh, some years ago. I'm going to use a little rubber washer to uh, try and keep the water out. That's this year's trick. So this has the uh, first nut tightened up onto it and then the second nut just put loosely onto the thread on the end. These threads are really quite poor. That one doesn't fit on there at all. That's rubbish. Okay, let's do this one. Let's tighten this one up against the body. And we'll take that one. Is that the bad one? Is this the good one? Yeah, so that one just goes uh, loosely up at the end of travel. Um, now I've done the black one already with the additional rubber o-ring in there. So I'm doing the yellow one now. So the next thing I need to do is push that uh, connector in there. And normally you wouldn't do this because you can't get these out once you've put them in, but it's okay in this instance. Okay, that's pushed into there. Now I need to put my screwdriver in and kind of work it so that the wings of that metal splay out as much as I can get them to splay out. Because what I need to do now is force that loose nut down in to that piece of metal to make the connection. So let's, uh, let's tighten that up, take off that nut and washer. Uh, put the little o-ring on there, which kind of just stretches a bit and pushes over. Got that from my uh, pound shop pack of o-rings and washers. And then uh, quite fortunate with the fit of that into here, it is a near perfect fit, slight interference fit, but I mean, that's just almost perfect. Put the, uh, I suppose I could use the spring clip, drop that in there, put the nut in there. Now the tricky bit, because I've got to try and tighten that nut. So first I've got to get it flat on which is quite tricky. Oh, that's worked. And then tighten that in such a way that the new O-ring, quite tricky to do. The new O-ring tightens up. And makes a good seal. And I think that looks like that makes a pretty good seal. Then it's just a case of positioning that near the end of the thread and tightening the two halves. And what happens is um, the coarse thread of the plastic means these two pieces move together quickly. The fine thread of the nut on the metal means that the nut recedes slowly. So in fact, there's a net movement inwards and the nut will push in against that metal wing. And if I just tighten that up, that's my new connector. Excellent. So that's the uh, black and yellow, all freshly made for this year. Let's take them outside and connect them to the solar panel. I think one of the reasons the water got in was that this terminal doesn't sit quite square. You can see it's leaning over slightly to the right. I'll turn it around that way. 
it's leaning over slightly to the left and that's because the metal wings of the connector these connectors only sort of sits on one half side of this housing so the terminal gets pushed over slightly and that left a little gap well with the new o-ring in there that should hopefully seal up that gap and stop the water getting in so here's the uh, solar panel frame and uh, it's the right hand one of these two panels where the wires come down and go to this big lead acid battery so uh, I want to connect my new connectors to the ends of those cables so last year's connectors can go in the pile of old connectors now actually these look pretty reasonable the crop clips that go on the battery so I might bring these out and uh, Vaseline that's what I want to Vaseline up these uh, connectors yeah I'll take these out and put them on the battery I think so I'll just dab a bit of Vaseline onto the uh, o-ring of the I suppose it's the male connector is it if I can turn that around yeah just get some Vaseline on the male one and similarly this one a little bit of Vaseline on there just so that the uh, o-ring makes a good seal when I close the connectors up so my black connector uh, goes into what I assume must be the negative of the solar panel and my yellow connector goes on to the uh, positive of the solar panel I suppose it must be and get that to fit hmm, perhaps I'll turn it around doesn't seem to be a very good fit that way around so these didn't fare terribly well they're all a bit rusty so let's take them off and uh, put these two well these are the first ones I think I had obviously didn't have them on there for very long but they do seem to be in uh, slightly better condition so let's try that that way positive assume that's positive yep and negative and the metalwork in those seems pretty good so that's it all I need now is to connect the uh, down cables from the solar panel to the battery with a charge controller I need to find one that has um, banana plugs on it so this one looks okay got a feeling this might have been a return because um, I've written scuffed on it it's a good one though 13.49 it's almost bang on 13.5 uh, volts for the float voltage modulation I think what happened is it just got scraped across the top there but I don't think it's breached the uh, heat shrink sleeving so uh, that should be fine I'll stick some uh, banana plugs on these wires and uh, connect it up so these banana plug terminals have got little grub screws in them but I think actually what I'm going to do is take all of the grub screws out and solder these so usual thing remember to put this onto the wire first always the way isn't it you solder the connector on and then you found you've not put the cover on so yeah I'll solder those on now so this means digging out my old uh, toolkit from uh, years ago when I was a field service engineer because in here I keep the, the big soldering iron my 60 watt soldering iron I think I'm going to need that for this job so just waiting for the soldering iron to warm up uh, which is perched precariously on the desk here and as usual my desk's in a total mess of course you don't get to see that normally you just get to see the uh, mat on the left hand side of the desk right let's get soldering so let's start by uh, taking a five millimeter length of insulation off these wires oh those wires look a bit corroded and if I should cut them back a bit can't cut the yellow one back very far because it's got the diode in the wire that keeps jumping to six see how I get on tinning those so I use the helping hand to uh, 
and apply solder to the inside of this banana plug. Let's go away for that to get hot enough to take. Come on. Feed solder down into there perhaps. I'll go in a minute. There it goes. Let's fill it with solder. And poke one of the wires in. That's still hot. And I've got to hold it until it sets. That seems to have set. I think that's good enough. Yeah, I'm just going to put this bulldog clip on there just to sort of absorb the heat out of it, help it to cool down a bit quicker. Hopefully, not melt my mat. And on to the next. Good. Hmm, this one, the uh, hole doesn't quite align with the hole in the cover. And I can see why now, because they've drilled the hole in the banana plug terminal uh, too far towards the tip, whereas it should be this far back. Still, a misaligned hole. I'm not too bothered. But yeah, it just doesn't quite align. Never mind. So, solar charge controller with uh, banana plugs on it. That should plug straight into my system outside. Now you might think that banana plugs are not a sensible connection system for outdoor use. And they're not. Every year I have to replace them because they go all rusty. But a lot of what I do is sort of demonstrations and uh, I need to be able to hook up things and unhook them quickly. So banana plugs work for me in that respect. And they're very visual. You can see exactly how they work. They're not complicated. So that's why I use them, even though I end up replacing them every year. So I've hooked up my DVM to the battery, which is at 12.7. Okay, let's connect the uh, charge controller. Uh, black to negative. Red to positive. Make sure that lights up and that the LED starts flashing. One, two, and something probably about seven ish, 12.7. Right, got to hook up the solar connections now. So, one working one handed, of course, a bit tricky. That's the uh, positive. Let's do the negative. And that should start creeping up now. And indeed, up it goes. Now this battery's not had the uh, solar panel connected for, well, the whole winter. It's probably not been connected since last, I don't know, September, October. Unfortunately, we have a very short summer here in the UK, but yeah, that's creeping up. That should get up to, um, well, initially the boost voltage, because this is, actually no, I think when this first boots, it goes up to 13.5, and then at the beginning of each day, it will go to 14.4 for a period of time. Let's just hit 13. Good. Well, I'll just let that charge, and then, well, I can do anything, can't I? I can... Uh, charge my electric bike or uh, fly quadcopters or whatever I fancy. Cheerio!